Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship here from the St. John United Church of Christ in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it is a warm, to put it mildly, summer morning here in Louisville. And I hope whenever you are watching this, wherever you're watching it, that you are having a good day and that uh, you've had a week where you've, it may be in spite of, of difficulties, uh, whatever the case, that you've been able to see uh, the activity, the hand of God at work around you and perhaps even in your own life. Uh, a reminder as we begin our worship time together that we will share in a time of Holy Communion later on as part of our worship experience. And so I encourage you, if you've not already done so, to make a quick run to the kitchen or wherever you need to go to, to grab a, a little bread or a cracker or something uh, and uh, some juice, some wine, uh, again, whatever you have uh, to, to be able to share in that time with us because in these days and this time when we are not able to, to be together in one place uh, to worship, uh, this is a way that we can really be connected with each other by knowing that we are participating and doing these things together at the same time as we share in communion or later on during our prayer time as we offer up uh, the prayer of our Lord together. It's a way of being reminded that we are part of the body of Christ, connected even though we may be apart physically. And so I hope that you will do that and participate that way with us. As we begin our worship this morning, uh, the lectionary psalm for this week it is one of my very favorites. Uh, many people cite the 23rd Psalm as a favorite psalm, and, and certainly it is, it is wonderful. But uh, for me, Psalm 139 uh, has always been just a, a source uh, of comfort, of reassurance, uh, of being reminded of God's love and God's presence with me, regardless of where I am, regardless of what's going on in my life, that God is there and that God loves me. And so let us be drawn in to a time of worship, just hearing these words from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's pray. Holy One, you know us already. Help us to know you better. Let us see you all around us even, and perhaps especially in the faces of those we would see as other, as different in any number of ways. 
fill our worship with your spirit so that we may learn to recognize your presence in all people and in all places. Amen. Our scripture focus today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. And again, Jesus initially in the first part of the passage is speaking to a crowd of people and later on in the passage speaking just to his disciples. But once again, as he did so much, he is teaching through the use of a parable. And it says, he put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and, and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. May God add God's blessing to the reading of the word. Let's pray. Holy One, thank you for time to step back from the activities and the distractions of life and to open ourselves to your spirit. Help us in these moments to have hearts and minds that are indeed open, ready to hear, but more than just hearing, ready to follow as you would lead us. Speak to us by the whisper of your spirit, O oh God, for your servants are listening. In the name of Christ, amen. One of the things that has been sorely missed by many, many people during these pandemic times has been sports. Now, having businesses close was one thing, but having the sports world shut down was more than many of us could, could bear just about. Now, I, I like sports. I follow several sports, but I will tell you I'm not nearly as big a fan as I was when I was a boy. I was a fan back in those days, <clears throat> excuse me, of lots of, of different sports, but my favorite was baseball. I was a Reds fan, still am. I played Little League. And during recess at school, we would choose up teams and play. Team captains would be designated and, and 
someone would, would toss a bat to one of the captains, and then the captains would take turns working their way with their hands around the bat up to the top of the bat until one of them was able to reach across the knob of the bat with their thumb. And that person got the first pick. Now, choices, those picks would, would be governed by a mixture of the person's ability and friendship with the captain. But whatever the game, whatever the season, you had to choose sides. You had to form teams to play. There was us versus them. But we humans have carried that concept, us versus them, into a lot of other more important areas of life than playground games. We've carried it into religion, Christians versus Muslims. And that's led to the Crusades and wars and distrust that has continued in many areas right to this very day. Protestant versus Catholic even within the Christian realm. That has led to scapegoating and mistrust and even violence. Historically, some of it taking place here in Louisville, just a few scant blocks from where I'm standing right now. We've carried that idea of us versus them into the area of families. Everything from Shakespeare's Montagues and Capulets to the Hatfields and McCoys of Appalachia. And of course, we've carried it into politics. Republicans versus Democrats, liberals versus conservatives, patriots, which no matter who is speaking is us, versus those people who hate our country. Well, it's one thing to see the world that way, distilling everything down to us versus them. But unfortunately, it often gets taken even a step further. You see, we go to the point of that it's not just us and them. They must be discredited, disgraced, dismissed, defeated. They are illegitimate, a threat to the right way of governing or worshiping or living. And when you are willing to see people that way, it's not that much of a leap to saying and doing things that are hurtful or even dangerous leaving the way of Jesus, the way of love, growing smaller and smaller and smaller in your rear view mirror. Well, Jesus had something to say that relates to this from the parable that we read a few moments ago out of Matthew's gospel. Like last week, once again, the story features a sower of seeds. But this time, instead of talking about whether the soil was good or hard or rocky or whatever, the focus is on the seed itself and on what it produces. The sower, Jesus said in the parable, sowed good seed. But afterward, during the night when nobody else was around, an enemy came and sowed weeds in the same field. <clears throat> so when the plants sprouted and grew, there was a mixture <clears throat> of wheat and weeds in the, in the field. And so the servants came and asked the landowner if, if he wanted them to go and to pull the weeds and remove them. 
know, if you've grown a garden or whatever, you're accustomed to that, pulling weeds out. But in this case, understand that the wheat wasn't sown in rows where the plants were a few inches apart. They were sown where they came up right next to each other everywhere. And so the landowner understood that if you hold the weeds, it would be impossible to do that without uprooting the, the wheat as well, even though the weeds admittedly would be taking nutrients and moisture from the soil that, that should have been for the wheat. And so the, the sower, the landowner, told his servants no. Leave them both to grow together. I'll sort them out later. But that's where a lot of us today have trouble. We are pretty, pretty sure that there are a lot of weeds mucking things up for us wheat. We don't know how they got there or who sowed those ideas in their heads, ideas that aren't like ours, ideas that are wrong, that are harmful to our way of life, ideas that surely God doesn't approve of. And when we begin to think those kinds of thoughts, we enter dangerous territory. You see, thoughts lead to actions. And when we judge people, not just actions, but people to be evil, we too often assume a position that belongs to God and God alone. Georgia Harkness said, the tendency to turn human judgments into divine commands makes religion one of the most dangerous forces in the world. It is so easy, you see, to convince ourselves that those weeds, they just have to go. We see them, we know their weeds, and we think they know their weeds. How can we not do something? But much too often when we get to that point, what we do ends up being precisely what we should not do what is not ours to do. Maybe we're impatient. Maybe we, maybe we don't trust God to sort it out in the end. Maybe we just can't let it go. But it's not our place. And truthfully, it's way beyond our capabilities. As I say sometimes, it's way above my pay grade. We must do what is ours to do. The work of love, proclaiming God's redemptive kingdom in breaking to our lives in the world. As the prophet said, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. Besides, there's another important thing to remember. Not only is our judgment imperfect, we are imperfect. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, if only it were all so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? Or as the old saying goes, when you point a finger at someone, you've got three others pointing back at yourself. Now hear me, this is not to say that we let evil acts 
go unchallenged. You probably also know the quote that states that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. We must not sit idly by while people are oppressed, when people are victims of injustice. We must oppose evil actions. We must not anoint ourselves judges over human hearts. Maybe there are weeds in the wheat. It's just not our job to pull them out. Amen. Now for our prayer time this morning, as always, I encourage you to, to lift up to God even as I lead us in a time of prayer, lift up to God those, those things that are weighing upon your heart and your mind this day. For God hears us. The prayers spoken, spoken aloud, the, the, the prayers uttered silently, and even the ones that you just can't find words for, God understands the very prayer of your heart. And so I encourage you to offer that prayer to God as I lead us in this prayer and then lead us to praying the Lord's Prayer together. I hope that you'll join me. Let's pray. Holy One, we confess that we have often placed ourselves in the position that is yours alone. We have not only judged those we have deemed to be weeds, but we have sought to uproot them, causing more damage in the process. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Help us to follow your spirit rather than our own egos. And help us to receive your forgiveness and grace. God, there are so many thoughts and fears in us these days. We hear the reports of exponential increases in COVID-19 in some parts of the country and significant increases here in our own area. We are concerned for people's jobs and livelihood, but we are even more concerned for their health and well-being. We are concerned for our children's education and for their social and mental well-being, but we are even more concerned for their health and for the health of educators and other school personnel. And we are concerned for our own health and for that of our loved ones. And so we pray, God, for guidance for those seeking a vaccine and for those seeking more effective treatments. We pray for our doctors and nurses and all healthcare workers. And we pray, O oh God, for effective compassionate leadership from those who are in the position to offer that leadership. Help us all, O oh God, to seek the common good, to rise together rather than fall into division. We continue to pray, God, that we have at last reached a tipping point in this country for racial justice. We pray that all of us, but especially those of us with white skin, would truly listen to one another, that we would finally see the pain that our black siblings have felt for far too long, and that we would do the work necessary to remedy that pain and to prevent its future spread. As the hymn writer said long ago, 
O oh Lord, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. May we follow your way, letting our every action be motivated by love. God, help us to find our way to unity, understanding that we are on this journey of life together. Help us to do the work that is ours to do, and when it is called for, help us to have the faith and the courage in the words of the great John Lewis to get into good trouble for the sake of those in need and for the sake of the oppressed. Help us and hear us, O Lord, as together we pray, O God, our Mother, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For Holy Communion this morning, I invite you to lend Christ your table, or whatever you are using as a table at this moment, even if it's your lap. Lend Christ that table. Lend Christ your bread, your cup, and your heart. And now come, you weary and restless, all who hunger and thirst. Jesus calls us to dine as friends. And so come, for God's feast awaits us. As we receive this bread and this fruit of the vine, we honor both creator and creation. As we bless these gifts and share them, we celebrate the table fellowship of Jesus, where all are worthy and all are welcome. As we receive the fruits of the Spirit, we celebrate the communion of all things. Creator, Christ, and Spirit dance as one. So may it always be. May we pray. Come, Holy One, come. Bless this meal and, and bless this fellowship. Bless our lives that justice and love may be the measure of our common witness. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ gives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have nourished us in this meal, fed our bodies and our souls. We have heard your love, so send us forth to speak it. We have seen your love, so send us forth to show it. We have been fed on your love, so send us forth to share it. And let all things be done for your glory. Amen. Well, just a, a few quick um, mentions before we end our time of worship together. The invitation, as always, to participate in the ministry of St. John United Church of Christ through your giving. Thank you to those of you who have continued to be faithful during, during these months of pandemic. Uh, but anyone who would like to do so may give. You can mail a, an offering, a check here to our church mailing address. You can also use the Venmo app on your smartphone uh, to give to St. John, and we appreciate all of those. 
If you would like to, to keep up to date on things going on at St. John and you're not already a part of the church as far as being a member or having been a regular attender, uh, and you would like to be part of our email list, uh, I would encourage you and invite you uh, to notify us. Our email address uh, will be posted uh, on this broadcast, uh, maybe in the comments now, uh, but if not, at, at the end, and you can send us an email with that request, including your email address, and we'll send you our, our church newsletter and, and other notifications. And one of those notifications that's gonna be coming up, and there will be information about it in our upcoming newsletter, is that during the month of August, on uh, every Thursday evening in August, we are going to be joining with other United Churches of Christ here in the Louisville area to offer an online uh, course called God Loves Racial, Racial Justice. Uh, it will be taught by Dr. Tyler Mayfield, who is Professor of Old Testament at the Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. And uh, we are looking forward to this. Tyler is, is a wonderful teacher and uh, the, the course is free. It will be taught via Zoom. And so you'll need uh, a tablet, uh, a computer, or at the very least a smartphone to be able to log in uh, and to participate. But uh, if you are interested in that, uh, we invite you to let us know as well. And again, there'll be more information about it in our church newsletter that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Well, as we get ready to, to go out into the world, at least in a limited fashion in the week ahead, it is my hope and prayer that you will be safe, that you will be well, and that you will see and experience the Spirit of God at work, not only around you in the world, but in your own life. And so now may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may be, you may with one voice, Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go and be the church. In the name of God, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit.